All right. Coming to you live from the social studies office closet. Oh, man. Will it work? All right. Uh, we just finished talking about uh, Valley Forge. All right, Burgoyne and Howe. <clears throat> uh, Burgoyne was the smart one. Howe was the idiot. Okay. Uh, Burgoyne's plan uh, was to divide and conquer. Okay. Burgoyne's plan was to divide and conquer. So he wanted to invade the colonies from Canada. All right. And then uh, Howe would come up through Philadelphia and they would meet. So in essence, you're splitting up the colonies and like from uh, Philadelphia and up and then below. OK, so we'll take care of the north, then we'll go down, and take care of the south. Because um, so the whole point from Burgoyne's plan, OK, was to divide up New England and to you know, that's block off New England, the New England colonies and New York from everybody else. So he captures Fort Ticonderoga, so things are going good at the start. However, Howe doesn't follow the plan, okay? Howe does not follow the plan. So Burgoyne wins early at Ticonderoga, all right? But because Howe stays in Philadelphia and tries to capture Philadelphia, Burgoyne has no help and no um, reinforcements from Howe. So he is actually going to end up losing the Battle of Saratoga. Okay, Burgoyne loses the Battle of Saratoga. And because he loses the Battle of Saratoga, the French step in and say, all right, we're going to help you out. We're going to help the colonists out. It looks like the colonists can win. Okay, so what is the importance of the Battle of Saratoga? The fact that because the colonists win, the uh, France comes in and says, all right, fine, we'll help it out. Okay. How actually, you know, does win some battles in Philadelphia, all right? He even captures... Philadelphia, all right, which was the head of the Continental Congress. But everyone leaves, the Continental Congress leaves um, at, you know, flees Philadelphia. So Howe wins some battles in Philadelphia, but because he left Burgoyne high and dry up in New York, it actually ends up being a bad thing for the British, okay? During the winter of 1777, which was even colder than the winter of 1776, uh, you have the Continental Army of Washington staying in Valley Forge, which is, you know, uh, just outside, it's like 20 miles outside of Philadelphia, all right? A lot of people desert, all right, because it's so freaking cold. They don't have a lot of food. And this is when Baron von Steuben comes in and kind of like starts getting the um, soldiers trained properly. Uh, Baron von Steuben was a crush. All right, so what happens at Valley Forge? All right, super cold winter, okay? Have some desertions, have some uh, attempted overthrows of the military, but von Steuben comes in, a Prussian general, and helps train the troops properly, okay? At sea, John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones is a guy from Scotland. John Paul Jones is the man. All right. He is going to be a privateer, okay, which in essence is a pirate. He's going to, in essence, be the U.S. Navy. Okay. And he uh, is going to consistently thwart the British Navy uh, using pirate tactics. Okay. Uh, what were the privateers and what did they do? Well, the United States doesn't have a Navy. So they say, hey, listen, any ship that attacks British vessels, you get to keep what you uh, overtake. So, like, you get to keep that stuff, all right? Um, and we just, we don't want those supplies going to the British soldiers. You can keep them, all right? So 
you have 800 vessels are going to be commissioned as privateers out of Chesapeake Bay, out of New England, all right? And uh, 600 British ships get taken down uh, during the American Revolution. Um, after the Paris Battle of Saratoga, France is going to come in, Spain is going to come in, and the Netherlands. Okay, so France, Spain, and the Netherlands are going to help out the United States with naval aid. Okay. In the south, you have Cornwallis, all right? Now, the British actually have a lot of support in the South. Most of the loyalists are going to be from the Southern colonies because those were the people that were doing the most business with Britain. All right. Uh, Cornwallis takes over the British troops in 1780. All right. His whole plan is to uh, attack the Virginia colonies. All right. And that way, once you attack the Virginia colonies, you can move up. All right, and then you'll just you'll lock everybody uh, in Philadelphia. All right. Cornwallis's plan is the first. All right, so to take the Carolinas, and then to take uh, Virginia. So you start in the south and move your way up. And what's going to happen is the loyalists. Cornwallis thought that the loyalists in the area would help out the British troops. Okay, that does not happen. Okay, that does not happen, all right? How is the Continental Army able to weaken the British military? Well, guerrilla tactics, okay? Uh, guerrilla tactics, all right, hit and run tactics. You have Francis Marion, the Swamp Fox. Um, and so Battle of Cowpens, uh, Kings Mountain, uh, those are going to be hit and run attacks on the British military in this time. And Cornwallis is going to be very flummoxed uh, during this time. All of these battles lead to the final battle where Washington is going to uh, uh, surround Cornwallis's troops at Yorktown in Virginia. So where do the armies meet for the finale? Yorktown in Virginia. And that's what Mr. Rowe is going to talk about. Check you later, man. <laughs>